welcome back to Elder Worm, episode 19. I said I'm going to Kaelid, then I'm going to Kaelid. Just to do, do a couple of things, pick up a couple of things. Running through Summon Water Village, now nice and peaceful, without the silly Tibia Mariner running around. Well, running around, floating around in his dinghy. Is there something up in this part of the ruins? Mm, doesn't look like it. Oh well. Ooh, dragonflies. Oh. Hello. Oh! Uh. Oh. Alright, come on. No. Sheesh! Come on! Silly dragonflies. Sneaky bastards. Hmm, wasted quite a bit of arrows, actually. Oh well. Caleb, the country next to Limgrave. You can see here... The slow transition. The creep. Of a well, far calmer and more peaceful land into something far less pleasant. Starting with this church where we get forcibly dismounted. You know what that means. Hello, Anastasia, the tarnished eater. You are pretty good with dealing with the fire, I guess. But not good enough. Sacred Scorpion Charm. There we go. Um, scorpion charm. <laughs> Talisman carried by assassins who strike unseen. Patent on the scorpion, freshly set from its uh, exoskeleton, its claws, seizing a heart with blessed glow. Raises holy attack power but lowers stack damage negation. Hence why it's more of an assassin's tool. The smoldering church. With a missionary cookbook and nomadic cookbook. Ooh. Uh, which ooh, which are those? Was it this one? No, it's this one. Silver picker fo foul foot, I think. Yeah, that increases item discovery, so it's useful for item farming. And then what was the other one? Fourteen poison pot, roped poison pot, and poison bone dart. Useful. Man, we have a lovely, perfectly round 3,000 uh, rooms right now. <laughs> oh dear, these dogs. Draw right. string lightning grease. Neat. We hop over this little burning wall. Get into Caleb proper. Oh my, it's so horrible here. Look at those birds. They are horribly malformed. The country is rotting. And I guess I'll have to explain why. It's rotting. Everything. Rotting scarlet. The very earth that Caleb rests upon. And Celia, the town of sorcery, the end is nigh for us all. Yeah. 
There is a very particular reason why Caleb is rotting, and we'll find out about that when we start exploring Caleb properly. Right now, though, I am on a mission. A mission from Gerd. No, uh, not, not a mission from Gerd. I'm not a blues brother. See, even the... Even the zombies here are... Like... Afflicted with the rot. We're gonna leave these guys... Actually, you know what? No, we're not gonna leave them alone. We're gonna set them on fire! Mmm, lovely! That was quite a lot of dudes. Oh. Oh, yeah, this is spicy. So here's my plan. There's a scarab down there. And we're gonna go in from this side. Oh, shit! There we go! Uh, quickly, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here! Oh, giant T-Rex doggos! Fear the T-Rex doggos! Derek Stargo is still chasing us? Nope. Nope. That's okay. Welcome to Kaelid. It sucks. It's horrible. Fuck Kaelid. Kaelid's the worst. Okay. Right. Well. Ugh. Now that I think about it, there's one other treasure over there in between all those doggos that I kind of want. Actually, I completely forgotten what it is, but if there's a carriage here. And whatever is in a carriage, I want. That's just how it works. Gonna try and sneak around and hopefully. Unfortunately. Great sword. Simply jumping breaks you out of stealth, typically. Alright. Quickly tag the next race. Ah, see? Yeah, that's all go. He noticed us. That's okay. Press it to grace, reset it. Okay. Pretty close to the destination that I have in mind. Um, where is the map fragment? Okay, there's a map fragment over there, and I know there's a map fragment down here. That's not the important bit, though. It's time they're trying to burn out the rot with fire. I'm heading this way, however. Right. Yeah, that thing is called an abductor virgin. Or an abductor maiden. Something along those lines. We don't want to mess with it. What we do, however, want is to... To hop on this tree root overlooking this gorge. And go into this cave. This cave we are not going to finish in this episode. In fact, I intend to die down here. So those 4,000 runes, eh. We'll deal with them later. Because, oh my. Poison swamps are bad. Rot swamps are worse. Uh, let's see. How we're going to deal with this. Uh, do I have a dagger with quick stuff? I do. 
Alright. Going into this cave. Yeah, whatever that item is, fuck that. Alright. Right, switch back to the Kitchi Katana. Turn on the torch. Run through the deep rot. Weren't there rats here somewhere? Oh well. Ooh. All right, so there's a poison mushroom guy down there. There we go. Okay. Now then. I think it's right over there, the thing I want to have. Uh, wait, where is my dagger? There we go. Ah! Ooh. Yes, the serpent bow. That's what I wanted to have. Alright. That's the only thing in this cave that I really wanted to have. And why? Because I intend to replace our short bow with this serpent bow. Yeah, it's a bigger, heavier bow. But the interesting thing is it scales with arcane and it has a unique ability. Malformed bow in the, sh the shape of a pair of poisonous snakes. Imbues the arrows with poison to pagan magic, revealing its true worth when used with poison infused arrows. Used by assassins known as formless serpents. So yeah, it's a bow that adds poison to arrows. And it scales with arcane. That's super fucking neat. Right, I'm gonna see what else I can loot from this cave, but I, I'm going to make sure I kill myself before I get to the boss. As I do not intend to fight this boss yet, uh, because it would frankly ruin another boss later, uh, later on. That I intend to fight. So yeah, I'm very deliberately not going to even try to beat this dungeon. Even though I might, I probably can. But it just would contribute some anti-climax. Because, yeah, I'm not... This dungeon is... Deeper into the game... Oh, crap. Alright, hello, uh, flower. So, these flowers are a lot worse because they don't spread poison. They spread rot. Oh, dear. Uh, get out of the rot! Get out of the rot! Rot, 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 rot! Shit, I've got rot. Well, okay, um, I guess we're dying sooner than expected. In that case, I might as well... Uh... Wait, how do I get... Ah, yeah, there we go. Uh, no! Ah! Drink it! Climb it! Climb the virgins! Or, or maidens, whatever. There we go, got the venomous fang. Uh, yeah, well, I guess... It doesn't matter what we kill now. We might as well just die. Hey guys, could you stab me? There we go. And those are the major treasures from inside this cave, unless you count the really good treasure at the very end. It's really damn good treasure. But, like I said, we'll, we'll come back to that one. That one's not for now. Now then, uh, speaking of things, more things that we're then going to get gonna leave this cave um, we're gonna go yeah we're gonna leave this cave and we're gonna go all the way over here. no no you know what I don't need that just yet that'll be that'll be fine we'll, we'll save that as a reward for later but now what I have is I have a bow that takes somber stone that I want to upgrade because I intend to make well good use of that bow. I then intend to shoot a lot of people with poison arrows. Well, 
I took you no matter it's lay out your arm. Alright, so strength and armament. Oh yeah, we don't have souls currently. Except we do! There we go. We have 4.6 thousand from all the little tiny golden runes that we picked up. So, let's put a somber smithing stone in here. Bloop. It's not much, but it's something. Right then. Uh, well, I guess I did say... Um, I mean, the only logical place... Okay, I am going to go there and pick something up then. Otherwise, this episode's really fucking insubstantial. We kill the invader? And we half loot a dungeon. And uh, I want something a little bit more than that. Can't call it an episode otherwise, can we? Bonk. So, let's quickly loot this graveyard. Mm, golden Rune 8, Golden Rune 6. We're getting some pretty decent, chunky Golden Runes here. Golden Rune 8 ought to give a few thousand. Right. Now then. We ride down this hill towards another minor Erd tree. And oh look, there's another Erd tree avatar. We're gonna skip this one for now. That's not a normal Erd tree avatar. We're gonna skip it for now. We'll come back for it later. What I'm looking for is, there we go. The spirit spring to help us get up this cliff. This cliff which gets us to this little fort. And a strange hill over there. Hmm. 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 Wait a second. That doesn't look like a hill. That looks like a tail. And a wing. Yeah, and it's got collision all the way around it. And hey, there's another... Oh, wait a second. That's not a... Oh. Oh! Oh! Say hello to Grey Old. Mother of Dragons. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! We're getting out of here! This is the single largest monster in all of Elden Ring. And she too is suffering from Scarlet Rot. She's literally rotted to the floor. She can't move. She can't protect herself. So she's surrounded by her precious babies, which will protect her for her. She's the mother of the winged dragons. Which I think is a strange title, because every dragon in this game has wings, as far as I know. Or was it flying dragons? Flying dragons, which is also still weird, because... There are other dragons that aren't classified as the flying dragons that do in fact fly. In fact, fly better than she does. Anyway, she is part of a uh, speed leveling strategy. But, um, we'll worry about that later. Right now, I want to have a look-see. And we can craft a couple of poison bone arrows. Fletched. Let's use some of those. Also, we're going to summon Oleg. Because we are going into this little fort. Fort Faroff. That's a 
poison started ticking yet? Yeah, now there's poison. Oh, uh, that is not a lot of damage. Oh, shit! Oh, oh crap, we got poisoned. And these things, I hate these things, these harpies. At least I refer to them as harpies! They are quite dangerous. They poison you, and they have a powerful sonic attack that will disrupt you when paired with their grab. Oh god, and there are so many of them. But that's okay. Because we can just ignore them and run past. You don't have to fight them. Oleg over there. Oleg will keep them busy long enough for us to escape up this ladder. And remember, FromSoft can make flying enemies, but giving them actual flying pathing, that's the tricky bit. So, yeah, climbing up this ladder, perfect escape. Ah, the Tectus Medallion right. Also, uh, let's craft some boluses. There we go. And then also, also, let's eat a bolus. As you can tell, like, even the bats down there were not that impressed by our dragon breath. Like, the enemies here are just a lot tougher. Now then. Let's continue running. Because this place looks pretty abandoned. But it isn't. So we are gonna run! Whoop! Whoop! Go down here. Oh! Ow, shit. I didn't expect him to actually follow me. Well, tits. Ah, but I want the treasure from inside this place. I'm gonna be a little bit more careful though and by a little bit more careful I mean a lot more reckless excuse me ladies coming through climb 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 ah there we go no damage got out no problem okay much better use of our resources now then, hop over here, summon Oleg. Wait. Oh, we didn't summon Oleg. Okay, well, screw it. Try summoning Oleg again. This time succeed, not drink. Okay. Go, 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 go. Grab this part. Ah, shit, we got poison, that's okay. Hop over here. Run around the corner, try to not get killed by the giant rat. Run over here. And grab Radigan's Sore Seal. That's the good shit. Look at how tough that rat is, and it instantly killed us. Well, we died again, and I have no intention of picking up those runes. So that's another 5,500 runes down the drain. Eh. So we've lost around almost 10,000 runes. That's okay. We got what we came for. We got the serpent bow. Which I wanted because it seems neat. And it scales with arcane. And it applies poison to your arrows. And then we can upgrade from Radagon's scar seal. To Radagon's sore seal. This legendary talisman is engraved with an uh, Elden Rune, said to be the seal of King Consort Radagon. Greatly increases vigor, endurance, strength, and dexterity, but also increases damage taken by similar measure. 
Solemn duty weighs upon the one beholden, not unlike a gnawing curse from which there's no deliverance. Yeah, so here's its lifelong duty, but here it's a solemn duty that weighs upon them, like a gnawing curse. That's a little bit of a hint already towards some of the plot elements. Ah, oh, look at that. It gives plus 5 to all stats, uh, all those physical stats, instead of plus 3. Yum yum. Even more hit points for us. More strength, more dexterity. More endurance. We should also equip these uh, gloves. Because of all that, we can actually wear a quite substantial armor with just how much uh, we've boosted our equip load. I, I think we could probably even... well. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. The flame crest. Uh, didn't read through it. The yellow flame is a symbol of the affliction serving as a warning to those who might approach the village. Yeah, from the Lore Nuggets little episode with that afflicted village. Ah, oh, well. Anyway, don't we look dapper with this helmet? Should I just do it? Should I do it? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm going to show you the way to get a crap ton of runes really easily. Uh, here's what we do. We take our Uchigatana, we apply... Oh, that doesn't actually modify the Ash of War on it. Oh well, in that case, uh, what I think we'll do, just to speed this up... Because we can do it pretty fast already but um gonna take some blood grease and uh also just to check yes we have the gold pickled towel foot we have a gold pickled towel foot excellent so here's what we're gonna do we are going to kill grail because whilst grail might be the biggest enemy in the game and have incredibly high health she um, is not immune to bleed. Let's see. Do we have a good spot here to hit her? No. And then we're going up here. Can we hit her from... Ah, yeah. We can hit her properly here. So there we go. We uh, kill her with bleed damage. And over here, her babies can't properly reach her. kind of sad but to be honest we are very much doing her a favor she is literally rotting into a pile of nothing into this landscape at this point killing her is a mercy killing trust me as a dragon lover this is very much what I think is the correct course of action to save her from the horrible, slow, toxic death that she's dying here.
and there we go. Thank you for your service, Grayol. She just gave us almost a hundred thousand runes by herself. And so the trick to this and yeah, she gave us five dragon hearts. Holy schnitzel. Yeah, so the trick to this is you can do this at level one fairly easily. All you need is a weapon that does bleed damage and some patience. It's fairly easy to go here. So what you do is you come out of the stranded graveyard. You like meet Vare, whatever. You touch a few graces until you get to Akil Lake North or Gate Front. Then you get the whistle to summon Torrent. Using that, you ride south along this road, along this, over this bridge, over here, to this, uh, this place, where there is a um, carriage, if you recall, where we found the Morning Star. The Morning Star is the lowest stat requirement weapon that you can easily get at the start of the game. That has bleed damage on it. So you take that Morning Star, you equip it. You don't even necessarily need to have the stats to equip it, but then you go with Torrent to Third Church of America. You touch the teleporter, you go all the way to the Bestial Sanctum, where Gurank is, then you travel south to indeed this tower, Lens Rise. You jump up, you drive past the Earth Tree, you jump up to Port Faroth, and then you're at the tail here. And you get a crazy amount of runes from her when you just kill her with a bleed weapon. Standing behind her where she can't defend herself. For a little bit of bonus. Before you do uh, uh, all of that, you go down towards, pa uh, towards the shoreline here, past this nomadic merchant. And here on the shore you find a gold pickled foul foot. Which is the consumable that I took to gain a crap ton of extra runes because it just temporarily gives you a buff that increases your boon gain by something like, I don't know, 50%? And now, like, say you do this at level 1, it'll pretty much instantly catapult you into the low 30s. But now we're already here. There we go. One point of strength. That gives us enough strength to use the Bloodhound's Fang if we want. And I say we pop another five points there. Into Vigor to just have more health. Uh, two more points in... Uh, two more points in Dex. I think. Hit harder. Uh, I do want more, more Arcane. Tough choices. A little bit more mind never hurt anybody. I think we're just gonna straight up invest in a little bit more decks. Yeah. No, we need more we need more arcane. More arcane and faith. We got a bunch of dragon hearts. There we go. So yeah, that's a quick way to... Ooh, speaking of Dragon Hearts, I just realized. Last time I didn't take the opportunity to read about them. Gain the power of the dragon at the Dragon Union Altar, but that's not all. Dragon Heart seized by a dragon uh, tracker. Riddled with gravel stone, this grotesque organ continues to beat vivaciously. An offering used in Dragon Communion. Consume a dragon's heart at the altar to make its power yours. While a terrible and savage looking thing, the heart has a peculiar beauty to it. Yep. Ah, oh, yeah, and in Fort Faroff we have both Protectus medallions. Left half of split medallion depicting the Earth Tree, right half. Uh, branching the medallion with both halves conjoined will activate the Crown Lift of Tectus, connecting the Alta Plateau to Liurna. The right half is set to reside in Fort Faroff, a Dragon Barrow far to the west. Left half is uh, in Fort Height, uh, far to the west. But yeah, we, we have both places, and they were indeed in those forts. Now then, I guess whilst we're here, we might as well do one last thing in Kaled and before we finish this episode. Which is go to 
the Cathedral of Dragon Communion. We ride through the Killeen ruins. Past the burning zombies. Find another race somewhere. Oh yeah, just beyond this. Just beyond this wall is another grace. Do another little quick peek at Caleb. Find some horrible creatures walking their dog. They look a little bit like centipede people. Ooh. Hello, Scarab. Ah, Ash of War Lifesteal Fist. Sure, uh, we don't want to bother, we don't want to bother with them and their dog. Let's see. I appear to have missed a grace. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. There's a merchant. Ah, and here's a grace. Yeah, I knew it. I missed a grace. Hmm. Still the combat music, so we just rest at the grace to reset their AI. And then there's a merchant here. Always worth visiting a merchant. Hello. Yes, welcome, valued customer. Come, trade in our wandering emporium. Please, buy something. I'm hungry. I've been hungry so long. Please. Well, let's see what you got. Oh, you have preserving boluses. Those are really damn nice. Not gonna buy them right now though, they're a little expensive. Some Ionian butterflies. And he just sells poison stones. Hmm. Pretty neat. And arrows and fire arrows. You actually sell pretty decent stuff, guy. But that's still not why we're here in Caleb. That's where ooh. It's just worth remembering the other guys over there. More of those horrible sense speed people walking their dogs. Uh, giant rot flowers. I think over here is another grace somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Nearby the great swamp of Aeonia. All of that is rot. All of it. It's horrible. horrible and I hate it but there's a scarab here that I want with the ash of war poisonous mist which allows us to make our weapon do poison damage isn't that neat uh -huh. let's if we go up back into Caleb proper Fortunately, still daytime. There's another merchant here, and there's a map fragment. The map of Kaled. Well, southern Kaled. There's also still northern Kaled. Hello, sir. What do you have? Ooh, a nomadic warrior's cookbook. Yes, please. And you have a note about gravity. 
and a cracked pot. Flaming crossbow bolts. You know what, sure, I'll read your note about gravity. Uh, wait, where is it? Gravitational powers that pulls can bring down, uh, can bring flying foes low. Yeah, that, yes. Okay, now slightly regretting buying that note. But that indeed is fairly sensible. The pull of gravity will bring flying enemies back to the ground. Hooray. Now that we're this close, might as well Whoop. grab a golden seed. And yeah. So, I showed you all the Church of Dragon Communion, but did you know that in addition to a Church of Dragon Communion, there is also a Cathedral of Dragon Communion? Well, it's right over here, in Caled. And the Cathedral of Dragon Communion gives us a lot more to work with. Ancient Dragon Apostle cookbook. Ooh. Uh, what does that one do? Dragon Wound Grease. Ah, yeah. Well, that's for slaying dragons, mostly. Look at all these breaths that we have here. We have Agil's Flame. We don't have enough faith to cast it, but you get access to Agil's Flame by killing Agil. Similarly, we have here Grail's Roar. Which we also don't have enough faith for. But, uh, and it costs three hearts. Grail's Roar is a debuff, an area effect debuff that you spread that reduces the attack power and defense of enemies. Grail was the mother of all dragons, dwarfing all who stood before her like a looming mountain. Whilst Agil, Charles Gas into Dragon's Plume, Flaming Breath from Above. Um, mm -hmm. The dead gazed at the skies over the lakes of Limgrave, praying that the dragon's flames would burn them to ash. But yeah, here's some teasers for other dragons that we can encounter. The glintstone breath from glintstone dragons, which deals magic damage. Rotten breath, that spews, well, scarlet rot, a gas that deals damage and inflicts scarlet rot. Ice Breath. Icy Breath, which of course deals magic damage and inflicts Frostbite. So we can get some alternate breaths. We have five hearts. I am very much in favor of picking up an alternate breath. Rotten Breath is possibly one of the most powerful incantations in the game. So we're going to grab that one. And then... For a variety... You know what? Let's just... Grab all these breaths. It's just fun to have access to a bunch of different breath attacks. And then we'll save the next two hearts for investing into stuff like Agil's Flame or Grail's Roar. And the claws are nice, sure, but you know, it's not as cool. Also, uh, we have now eaten several dragon hearts and... Uh, our eyes have changed into dragon eyes. Dragon communion is slowly turning our dear Sylvie into a dragon. Huh? Something died. Oh well. Not important. Anyway, slowly becoming more of an Elden Worm. Let's, uh, you know, just, just because we can. Uh, where's the grace? There it is. Let's just show off uh, some of these other breaths, right? Oh, and I noticed we can add a charge to a flask. And increase the amount for finished. There we go. And actually, allocate flask charges. Have a bit more mana. And our flask of wonders physically put a second ingredient in. HP over time. Damage negation, crack tier, boosts faith, boosts stamina. Ah, let's put the Crimson Burst in there as well. Just make it heal more. 
Right, memorize spells. Ah, we have so many, so many breaths to pick from. We can just use all of them. So let us use all of them. Oh, what's this actually? Uh, increase holy damage negation. Yeah. Very well. Glintstone breath. Rotten breath. And ice breath. There is another breath type that we don't have access to yet. Neither the base version nor the upgraded legendary version. But uh, we'll find out more about that some other time. For now though, I hope you enjoyed this brief peek at Kaelid and how horrible it is here. And uh, see you next time. Hey. Bye.